So there you've got your legs posed, posable. You've got your arm posable. You can go in and just continue on like this, adding in extra controls. I'd suggest maybe adding in a control for the waist. Maybe a, if we just create a NURBS primitive circle. Let's just create that. Snap that to the position of that joint. And then we select the hip. What we can do is we can do a parent constraint. And this will effectively parent this to the hip. We don't want to maintain the offset. Offset, click apply. So now, if that main skeleton is hidden, we can still have the access to these controllers. And we can move her, we can rotate her. And obviously, if, uh, if the, um, yeah, if you've done both sides of the skeleton, then uh, both those legs will be locked to the floor. So, enough rambling. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly just pause the video and load in a, uh, another rig that I've worked a lot more on, just to demonstrate what sort of effects you can get from it. Okay, before I load in that other skeleton, I just wanted to point something out which you may have noticed um, as you've been building your rig. If you rotate the waist, as we can see here, the arm is float. The control arm is floating away from the main arm. Um, so how do we fix that? Well, rather than using connections, which the problem is, if the z attributes on here are zero, on the uh, control shoulder are zero then it's not going to effectively rotate the main shoulder. So we're going to use instead, rather than using connections on the shoulder, you can use another constraint. So let's first go in, uh, get our control shoulder, and let's just break that point constraint. Uh, delete selected, no, break connections, there we go. And let's just move this up. Let's select our shoulder and let's just break those connections as well. So now the X is still connected to there, but the actual Y and Z are no longer controlling that shoulder. So what we're going to do is select the control shoulder, select the main shoulder and go to constrain orient. And you'll see in here we have constrain axes. Now we don't want to constrain all because we still want the rotate X to control the bicep twist here. So we're only going to constrain the Y and the Z. Click add. Now we can rotate the shoulder just as we did before. With the X still working on that bicep twist there. So let's just point constraint this again. Constrain point just so that they're lying in the same position. Now if we rotate there we can see the control shoulder is, is locked in place with the uh, the base skeleton but the arms are still are now uh, overlapping each other correctly so they're not floating away from each other. So in this instance I'd suggest for the shoulder I'd uh, do that sort of setup where you're using a orient constraint rather than direct connections between them. As you can imagine if you're animating and the control arm is floating away up here you're not going to get a proper response uh, to where you're uh, rotating those sorts of joints. Anyway with that little fix in there I'm just going to quickly load in a uh, rig which I've already done a lot more work on just so you, I can show some of the key areas um, and, and some of the things that you can do if you spend a bit more time adding more controls. So this is a more cleaned up version of the rig. It's had a lot more time spent on it. We've created these icons which represent what you're selecting. They're different colours on each side so you know which is the right and left and right hand side. Uh, and as we can see it's pretty much just like we had set up before. As I mentioned, add attributes onto the controller so you're not actually going in and editing those joints. 
Ideally, you don't want to touch the joints. Adding these attributes is just directly connected to those joints in there. So now we can create that sort of pose just by selecting the foot. We have an extra toe rotate in there as well and our tiptoe which we saw before. Our knee position again all just done by NURBS curves. We have our control arm just like we saw before just with the display handles uh, visible which just makes it easier to control. We've got that wrist twist in there. This icon here is connected to the IK which is in the arm. Now I'm just going to quickly show you how to uh, work this. At the moment it doesn't do anything. Now briefly I showed you this IKFK keys. All you would do to enable this is create a controller like this, select the IK, connect and then click connect to IKFK. And that will allow you to disable and enable the IK on the arm so you can switch between IK and FK. So if we wanted to we could enable IK solver and now when we move this the hand is under the control of the IK. Even if we move the waist the hand is locked. So if we undo that, click that again, it's now disabled and you can animate that as you're working. You can then you can also move your IK to FK so if if you've moved your um, arm into a FK position you can uh, lock, you can move the position of the FK arm to the IK arm and vice versa. And you can also set keys which switch between the IK and FK. I get a lot of people asking me about this, um, how to control the IK on um, this sort of rig. Uh, some of you who have, seen, have visited my site will probably know and have seen this rig before. It's actually part of a free script which I have, which is an auto rigging tool called Creature Tools. And it gives you this sort of rig in a matter of a few clicks. You just position the joints, specify the type of rig, and you get this sort of setup. Uh, just as a bit of a disclaimer, if you do visit my site and download this script, there are some errors with it. Uh, it's not perfect, but as you can see here, and as you can have a play around with, because these files will be um, supplied, you can quickly get a rig, bind the skeleton, and it gives you a good starting place to pose your character. There's some extra controls for just giving her a bit of a hip wiggle. We've got our spine controls here. And obviously finger controls. Again, extra attributes here. They're just connected up using set driven keys. They just allow you to quickly go in and pose a hand. It's all about just being able to do things quickly and without being complicated. You don't want to have to go in, select the joints, select the hierarchy, rotate the joints, set a key. If you can just quickly go in, select a control, pose it like so. It's a lot easier for the animator. The head here, we have a controller which moves the head around. And when we come to look at blend shapes later, you could add more attributes onto the head controls here and connect them directly to the blend shape controller so you can do all the head editing just by one icon you don't have to go in and select the blend shape uh, editor node or anything like that and as you can see her eyes are locked to this controller here and again we've just used constraints but instead of uh, normal constraints we've used aim constraint so these eyes are always being told to aim at these locators in here. So we can give her freaky eyes like so. And then these two are just parented underneath this cube so that we can quickly position both eyes. So that's just a really quick overview of this sort of rig and what you can achieve if you spend a bit more time um, just adding extra layers of controls on top of your skeleton. It's just Even if you're just doing an illustration, it's worth creating this base mesh, creating this sort of rig, and then later down the line, if you need to quickly create a, char a female character like this, you can load this in, pose her, and she's done. You just need to dress her, add hair, and the scenery. You don't have to worry about having to go in, 
physically editing vertices because she's already rigged. So like I say, this is available with the downloadable files, so feel free to play with it. Um, you can, like I say, you can download creature tools from my, my website if you want to just get your hands on this automated script. Um, if there's any problems with it, feel free to just bug me and I will try my best to fix it for you. So, what next? Well, the body's poseable. We can move the head around, we can move the eyes and the legs and the, we can get her into numerous different poses. So what we'll do next is we will look at creating blend shapes which will allow us to give her facial expressions and show a bit more emotion.